Right, 9.86 on week 9. We have a Brayton gas turbine with working with air that delivers 32 megawatts of power. The minimum and the maximum cycle temperatures are 310 and 900 Kelvin, and we know that's going to be state 1, right? The 300 is going to be my state 1. This guy here might be my T1. This is the T3, right? After I have my heat addition. And the pressure air at the compressor exit is A times the value of the compressor inlet. Okay, so if you guys recall, this is a compressor inlet, state 1, and then compressor outlet, this is it, 2. So the ratio between the two of them is 8. So in other words, that's telling us that P2 over P1 equals 8, right? And this one is very easy to see because we know we have pressure here on the corner. So therefore we know that this one, number 2, is going to be greater than number 1. So it's easy to see it's P2 over P1 instead of P1 over P2, right? Makes sense. Then, assuming an isentropic efficiency of 80% for the compressor and 86% for the turbine, and accounting for the variation of specific heats with temperature, determine the mass flow rate of air through the cycle. Okay, so don't forget, if we need to account for the variation of Cp and Cv, then that means we can't use our approximations for delta H and for delta U, right? And we actually have to use table values instead of calculating and using our relationships. Okay, so let's just write down what we know. We know that T1 is 310, 310 Kelvin. We know that T3 is 900 Kelvin. And let's go down a little bit. And we know there's two isentropic processes, right? Because it's a um, it's a Brayton cycle. We know our output output power is 32 megawatts and we also know that the turbine has a 80% efficient 86% efficiency and the compressor an 80% efficiency right so this guy here over here from 3 to 4 that's an 86% efficiency and this guy here from 1 to 2 that's an 80% efficiency that's a compressor right there Right, so just remind yourselves, from 1 to 2 we have the compression, then from 2 to 3 we have the heat addition, 3 to 4 we have the expansion or the turbine work, and 4 to 1 we have heat rejection. Okay, so what do we need to do here? We need to find what is the work output of this guy. Right, so what's the area inside this cycle? And with that we're going to see how much it takes per kilogram, how much this guy outputs per kilogram. And then we can use that to calculate our mass flow rate mass flow rate, which is going to be just this 32 um, megajoules per second, right? Divided by whatever the work of this specific cycle is. Okay, so we just need to find what this guy is, so that we can put in here and find what's the mass flow rate that's required. Alright, so let's do that. The first thing, well, as per usual, I have my first state, I have my third and first state defined, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate my second state based on my first state and my fourth state I'm going to use calculate based on my third state. Okay? And if I want to know the work of this guy, if I want to know this guy here, what I need to find is the delta enthalpies, right? Because I know that my the work of my compressor, work of compressor, is going to be the difference from 2 to 1. Right? And I can grab my properties for state 1. State 1 is defined, it's 310 Kelvin. So I can go ahead on table A17 and I can go and grab everything that I need. And in this case I'm going to grab my PR1 because I'm going to use that to find PR2 since it's an isentropic transformation. And I'm going to grab enthalpy 1 which is what I need to do this difference here, right? So from the table I got PR1 to be 1.5546 and enthalpy 1 to be 310.24 kilojoules per kilograms. Alright, so I'm going to use this 
relative pressure to calculate my PR2, right? Because we know that there's a relationship, relationship between so P2, P1, PR2, PR1. This is only valid for isentropic processes, right? Please don't ever forget this. So my PR2 is going to be just my PR1 times uh, P2 over P1. And we know this guy here is 1.55. And we know that this guy here is 8, right? Because that's the ratio that we had from the start. That's just 8 times 1.55 which means that my PR2 is 12.5 uh, 12 point, 12 point Okay, with this, right, I can do exactly the same thing. I can go onto table E17 and I can grab the properties for 2, right? So I can go once more, I can go to table A17 and since I have the defined state, because all the properties on table A17 are defined by temperature, so as long as I have one, I can grab everything else. Okay, and what I did is, I actually have the table here just to show you. Okay, my 12.44 falls here, so we're going to have to do some interpolation. And what we're looking for is enthalpy, right? So I just need to interpolate for my enthalpy here. And the value that I got interpolating is 500. 62.26 that's kilojoules per kilograms okay so now that we have this guy here that we got from interpolating the 12.44 I can plug it in this difference over here it's going to be the 562 that I just got minus the 310 that I had before which is going to give me a compression work of where is it? No, I haven't put it yet. I'm just going to leave it as, as like this for now. So I'm going to do 500 and what was it? 62.26 minus 310.24. And let me actually separate this. Okay, so we have the compressor one, but we cannot forget that the compressor has an, an efficiency, right? The efficiency of the compressor is 80%, okay? So my real compressor, let's call it, call it that way, is going to be this difference that we just calculated divided by 0.8, right? We can do that later on. So now let's go ahead and calculate our turbine work. Okay, so just like before, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time we're going to do it first for the 900, is it? Yeah, 900 Kelvin. Okay, same thing on table A17. I can go ahead and grab my PR3. No, it's exactly the same process. And my enthalpy 3, this one being 932. 0.93 and this one being 75.29 right and once I have this guy once again once I have my relative pressure I can go and calculate my PR4 because from 3 to 4 I have an isentropic process right so P3 over P4 equals PR3 over PR4 and also equals 8, right? Because P3 over P4 also equals 8. Therefore, my PR4 equals my 75.29 divided by 8, which is equal to 9.8. Four, one, one. 
Okay, so once I have again, once I once I have this guy, I can go to table A17 and do exactly the same process that I just that I did up here, and I can grab the entropy, right? So the only thing I need out of this guy is to go back to table A17 and interpolate if I have to, and grab the entropy. And the entropy I got was. 519, so that's a B for the fourth state is 519.32 kilojoules per kilogram. And now I can calculate the difference to find what's the compressor work, right? No, sorry, the turbine work. Because I have 519 and 932, just need to subtract the two of those guys to get what's the work that I get out of my turbine. Now there's two ways you can think about this, right? You can do work of your turbine is just the difference of the one that's greater minus the one that's smaller. In this case it will be H3 minus H4. And that's just going to give you a positive value. Or what you can do is do final state minus initial state, which is going to be um, 4 minus 3, which is going to give you a negative value, which is telling you that this is work that's being outputted by your cycle. Right, so the, tur the compressor is using work or using energy, the turbine is outputting it. Okay, so in this case, just going to be the difference between them. All right, so let's calculate the net one, because then, don't forget, we still have to multiply this by, we needs, still need to take to, into account the efficiency of the turbine, which is 86%. Okay, and this is one part that a lot of students like to flip the idea, because, check it out, the idea is that work net, yeah, it's how much my turbine is giving me minus how much my compressor is taking away, right? So if both are positive, we're going to do it that way. If the, you're doing a turbine as a negative value like that, if you're doing a negative value, you just have to sum them up, right? Because it's going to be the negative value of the turbine. This guy's going to be negative. This guy's going to be positive. And then your net value should be a negative number, which is the total output of your system. Okay, so really up to you how you want to think. Since I left that way, let's just keep it that way for now. So my work net for this specific cycle will be my H4 minus my H3. And then let's take into account the efficiency of the turbine. So I need to multiply that by 86 because if this guy outputs, I don't know, 40 kilojoules per kilogram, then it's going to output less due to its efficiency, right? And the compressor, it's the other way around, right? Because we're going to have H2 minus H1. It's going to be a positive value because it consumes. And I need to divide that by the 80% of the compressor, right? Because if a compressor takes up, um, I don't know, 10 kilojoules per kilogram, and it's 80% efficiency, it's 80% efficient, so it's not going to take 8 kilojoules per kilogram. It's still going to take more, right? So I need to divide by the 80%, not multiply by it. If I were multiplying, I'll be I'll just have a compressor that's more efficient than the isentropic inefficiency, not less efficient. Okay, now we're just plugging in those values. So we have the difference. We have um, 519 here. We have 932 here. Have 562 and 310. And then if you do this math here, we're going to get that our work net equals negative 40.69. Right? And this value here, it's again, it's negative because this is what is being outputted by the uh, cycle. And if you wanted to keep that positive, that would be fine. And then what you would do is make this guy negative here to subtract the difference between what the turbine is giving you and what the compressor is taking away, or actually consuming. Okay, so we know this cycle gives, out, gives us 40 kilojoules for every kilogram. Now the question asked us, how much air do we need to put through if we wanted to get 32 megajoules out of it, right? So that's part of the initial equation that we set up. The mass flow rate of this guy, just looking at the units, we those 32 megawatts, and the 32 megawatts I can transform into 32 
times 10 to the third kilowatts, which is the same thing as kilojoules per second. And I'm going to divide that by the work net that we just found. Right, so that's going to be the 40.69 40 kilojoules per kilogram. My change color to this. So my kilojoules per kilojoules, and I'm left with kilograms per second. And this turns out to be 786.6 kilograms per second. Right, so I need this amount of need almost 800 kilograms per second of air going through the cycle so that it can output my 32 megawatts. Right? Let me know if you have any questions.